Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I'm here with your favorite, the original comedian, delight, Chris Frangiello. Welcome to Juicy Scoop. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm so, it's been a while, I feel like. I'm I so excited to be back. I've had a little bit of a time, you know, we got through the new year without seeing each other and, and we've had a lot of big stars on the show lately so i get i feel like i get bumped when when spencer pratt is i mean ca calls or no he didn't call i Whatever. just i i reached out to him he said i'm not doing any podcast but my mom's a fan so i gotta do yours and he just cracks me up he just reminds me of yeah. like he reminds me of my friend's husband who's my friend rammy he reminds me of just the s like i just i like feel like i'm back at sc with like a college yeah orange County babe. And okay. it just makes me joyful. Yeah, I listen to the but he's good. He's funny. He's funny. Yeah. Um, but Chris, you're always gonna be my favorite. We're having my nips are freezing. It is I the know. coldest it's been. I we had hail yesterday. I was shaking. Um, I've asked for prayers for Woodland Hills. I got in my car today and I, I felt like I was an East Coaster. I, I had to wait for the windshield to heat up a little before I could put the windshield there was frost. wipers there was on. Frost on frost. the windshield. Yeah. And you're layered, very cute. Yeah, this is. Uh, you never had to use an ice scraper because you grew never. up, you were born and raised in Woodland Hills, and, and so thank you. Uh, East Coast people like myself you used to have to get take a scraper, an ice scraper. Can't from imagine the backseat of your car and get out there and scrape the windshield. I mean, why bother? To I know. Do anything with your? Yeah. I'd be like, they they should cancel school if you have to <laughs> they, go they, do that. In some cases, they would. Now they never. Now yeah. they never will because you could just go on Zoom. <laughs> school has just been canceled forever now. <laughs> For all children. Um, yes. So you are wearing a, a newsboy, I'm a.k.a. A news Brad boy. Pitt's look for right. many years. Yeah. And I said, are you going to take off the hat? Are we doing this hat the entire YouTube? And you want to reveal something you don't think I'll be happy about. So why don't you tell me what it is? Uh, well. First, when you said something happened, I thought, do you have like a brain tumor? No, 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 And no, they no. had to like look at something no nothing, okay I, I mean i wish that i had an excuse as that that i can get some sympathy like that but it's not that what um, is it however i don't know if many people listeners don't know what our situation here in los angeles is yes. different than the rest of the country in fact we have lockdown we are locked down to where there's no outdoor dining no uh personal services like nails and, and hair well speaking of which i went out we went on a hike okay Wearing masks on the hike. Sure. With uh, my son and my friends uh, and her son. And we went to our Woodland Hills Village. And I got my favorite kava salad and they got tender greens. And I and you cannot eat anywhere. You cannot sit. You cannot eat. And you had told me that you had been kicked off the grass for eating there. Yeah. In and I said, okay, no one's around. Let me sit by this koi pond. That's where I sat. And I got kicked off. Oh my God! The, they came and they're like the guy's yelling yeah. and get up, get up! And I, I, I had my my, my friend's <laughs> son film it because I'm like I think I need to remember this moment. And I mean I was just like they're like get your mask back on. I'm like I'm sorry. And I'm getting the last piece of hummus in my mouth and I'm putting my mask on. And I'm like I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're like we're, and then my friend got caught again for just taking a sip of her drink outside under her mask. He's like you cannot eat or drink. In the outdoor village, the yeah. next day, Gavin says we can eat outside again on Friday. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I just, know. Like... But then, I mean, apparently we are we are ground zero for COVID cases here in Los Angeles. They there's so much so that, you know, like a, f a friend of a friend I know had died and they couldn't pick up his body for 24 hours because there's no room in any hospitals. This is what I've heard. Yes, so no, like, it's true. It's why it's are awful. they opening? Now I don't know. Like, I feel like we, we're all kind of we've, we've they've opened, they've closed, they've opened, they've closed. Know, so now we're like just we're all used to it now. So just keep it closed. Until... I know if I was a restaurant owner, and I know every restaurant owner has a different situation, right? But if at this point I'd be like, you know what, let me just hang on for like another month, yeah, until I can hire more people and maybe have at least half inside. Right. I don't know, but I, I don't know what their situation is. It's just like, uh, you know, it, and then they decide to open it on the coldest week in L.A. Right. It's going to be pouring rain and freezing, but you can go out. You to, can eat in this tent yeah, so. at IHOP on, on the Tour Boulevard. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. But anyway, okay, but I, 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 and then your, I read a story yes. that says they can no longer, that's how dire things are in Los Angeles. Yeah. We can no longer cremate people because so many people have died. We've cremated so many people that the air in Los Angeles is filled with 
ashes of cremated people. This is a true story. Like, is it true? That's what it's, Who knows? This is like LA Times. So, okay, all right. So yeah, that's terrible. It's a, it's a legitimate news source that's saying that they have to stop cremation. And once you read that article. You're going to go out there and choke on grandma's tits. <laughs> <laughs> cremated tits. That is terrible and not funny, but that but, is what made you do something drastic. So I, think. I, I was under the impression that we're not going to have haircuts because I've read all these stories until May, June. I thought when things open back up. So I went and bought some clippers at. Uh, this happened Sunday at Marshalls. Yes, and I took and I put them on a five. You know how they have adjustments. Yes. And I put the five into my hair. I have big, thick hair like yeah. your husband Peter. Yeah. Nice head of hair. So I think yeah, I'll just do a uh, trim it. But you hit it, and it go gone. Five is there's no. This five is one. It's just a. So this is what happened. Oh this God! Is... Oh God! Get ready. <laughs> I'm scared. This is, this is ah! Ah! <laughs> oh my God! This oh my is... God! You look like a white surprise. You look yeah. so fucking scary. Yeah, that's what I get. The... Oh my God! Proud boys. Oh my I joined the proud boys. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have my feet up on Nancy Pelosi's desk next week in the Capitol building. Oh my yeah. God! Put it back no, on. No, no, no put I'm the hat back. I, I'm gonna keep it on. I know. <laughs> I, I mean, is it that bad? It's watch. You're gonna get used to it. You're gonna get used to it. Uh, it's not the Chris I like. I understand. I understand. I all. I mean, it gives you. You know what? If you Listen. had a neck tattoo, I might get turned on. Oh, I feel oh, like it's I a can... whole different persona. Right, 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 right. You have a leather jacket on, but then you have like the cute, like conservative sweater underneath. Uh -huh. So I need like those shorts, those cargo shorts, and like a big calf tattoo. Okay. Um, I need that chain that connects chain your belt wallet. to yeah, your right, wallet right, right. so no one steals it. As <laughs> if someone's coming up to a guy like that to steal his wallet anyway. Like I this... think that's for bikers so it doesn't fall out of their pocket. Oh, that's what I thought it was for. that they thought it was like they were no. being pickpocketed so much. And I'm like, you're a huge big guy. Who the fuck is going to try no, to pickpocket? No, for when bikers, their wallet oh. falls out, it doesn't fall out and then just go down the street. It Why don't they put on. it in the little thing in the motorcycle? They have like a little <laughs> know, purse I area. I could be wrong, but I thought that's what the chain wallet was for bikers. Oh, well... <laughs> Um, um, anyway. Okay, keep it off if you want to keep it, keep off. it off. I'll put it back on. It's. I mean, I didn't really. Use it. That was. That was <sighs> my heart. You were okay. horrified. Well, so you know, my kids both have a lot of hair right now. Yeah. And Peter has been doing haircuts before COVID just because he's a cheap weirdo. Okay. And he's doing your sons. Haircuts. He's done the sons. I've come home from, you know, doing five shows to right. two Marines, you know? And I'm like, what the fuck? Did they just get drafted? What happened? Right. Horrible. Yeah. And I'm like, my kids don't have good enough faces to score like this. So I got them into going to Floyd's and they were like, mom, you're right. We do look better when we go to Floyd's. Okay. Yeah, Floyd's. So I'm like, you know, it's time to start looking, caring about your looks a little like COVID eventually is going to be over. I'm going to, you're going to see other women besides me. Right. Let's make something happen. Okay. <laughs> So Peter's like, okay, I'll do your hair today. I go, today? They're lifting the band. Like, let me just get into Floyd's. So Peter goes, I'll give you $20 each if you let me cut your hair. So then I said, I'll give you each 30 right. if you don't let him cut your hair and you let me take you to Floyd's. And, and I will Floyd's pay for the haircut. Bucks, right? I will pay for the haircut and they get $30 for going with me. Wow. So, um, so what did they do? I, they, they they said Floyd's. I mean, they, well, money talks. Well, going to convince him it's my haircut. Yeah. Show them this. This will be like, this is what happens when you do it on also, your own. Also, though, when Peter would do it, like, there, then there'd be just like one, not on purpose, but like one long hair that's like floating out that he missed. Well, can I tell you the story of this haircut? <laughs> what? This I did on Thursday. Yes. And I brought, it was a cordless trimmer that, yeah. I, that I charged up at my house and then brought it to the Malibu okay. place. Okay, yeah. I'm halfway through and it goes out. The charge dies and I don't have the charger. So now I have, I look like a Hare Krishna. <laughs> I just have a big <laughs> oh tuft of hair sticking out of the top. And I, I didn't How even, did your family deal with you? I that just we... put a hat on for the rest of the weekend and walked around Malibu with a hat on for the rest of the weekend. So the baby isn't scared. No, the baby doesn't even really, kind of even notice, really. Okay. She just, she's happy with um She actually rubs it. And it's okay. Fine. All right. Yeah. Thank God. Um, but anyway, I had to. It took two 
separate. Had to take the thing back, <sighs> charge it up again, and get it done. That's a horrible it was story. Better, yeah, it was that's a, a horrible story. Anyway, here we are. Let's get into, some juicy, get into some juicy scoop. I want to talk about the Bachelor that was on last night. Yeah. Okay, and you had a question about last night's show. You saw well, bits just, and pieces. Yeah, I do bits and pieces. I go through yeah. the channels and I happen to see it's on. I just can't commit to the two two hours. It's of a it. it's a long commitment. Yeah, yeah. But I do. I think he's an attractive guy. Oh, he's a babe. And there are, and I think the ones that are left. Yeah. Seem they're attractive, so it's fun to watch attractive people. Yeah. But I saw them in squirrel outfits, and I was wondering why they were in squirrel outfits. They were in squirrel squirrel outfits because they're at this big resort. They can't leave again because right. of the COVID thing. So there's a few activities they can do, but they're not going to like Barcelona. And walking is this in the Los streets. Angeles? Are they in? No, now they're in somewhere in the East Coast. Okay. And. They had to do a scavenger hunt to, like, win time with him or whatever. And first they get in these big pumpkins. I first thought they were real pumpkins. They go, you're eating a thousand-person pumpkins. And I'm like, oh, they're in that, like, gross, like, you know when you carve a yeah, pumpkin? Seeds and, stuff. and then one girl, the girl from Ethiopia, she was, they just left her out in the lake. She couldn't get back. But anyway, I don't know if they're plastic pumpkins or they were really giant pumpkins that were gourded out but they go and they go on the lake in their thing and then they have to go and get in a squirrel outfit and find their acorn with their name on it and this is all this is all and then this one girl from chicago hates this other girl that just arrived because five new people arrived and so they're like oh now they've all bonded they all hated each other until the new girls came yeah and now they all hate the new girls and this one new girl she comes right out she makes out with matt and this girl's from Chicago and this other girl's from Chicago and they're both part of like the VIP bottle service world. And the girl's like, um, I heard she was an escort. And then the, they're, they're like, what do you mean? She entertains men for money. And so this girl's like now devastated. Like her life is pretty much ruined. Like right. now everyone's going to always associate with like, are you a, a hooker light? And I'm sure half those girls are hooker lights at this point. Yeah. It seems like every girl that has an Instagram account with a decent body who's over 25 is mm -hmm. like, want to see my feet for $50? I mean, wh where do you draw the line? Right. Anyway. Now that, but that, I read a little blurb. Yeah. About, they said that was considered slut shaming that oh. what they did to that girl. Mm. And that is not allowed. They said the bachelor uh, last night went to levels of slut shaming that are not allowed. Anyway. Wow. So anyway, that's what I read. Well, there is this other girl on that is just, I've compared her to Chris uh, Lily's character in Summer Heights. Yes, from, I, she's horrible. Okay. okay. But if she, I didn't see her last night. Has she been? Yeah, this is her. Oh, no. I'm thinking of another. Where was the girl who's I mean, this princess? is what she's wearing on camera. Like, no makeup. Yeah. And and even yeah, Drake well, was watching like and he goes, doesn't. he goes, why why is there one ugly girl? And she's really not that ugly, but like everybody needs some makeup and con some concealer. And she looked to have almost like a sty or like a pink eye. And yeah. she won't wear any makeup. And um and she's literally doing a character. I don't believe this is girl. She's just like, um, yeah, because you're a bitch and I'm not a bitch, and you owe me an apology. And Matt and I are going to be together forever. So shoo away, bitches. Is this the, the girl who calls herself arrived. the queen or the princess or something? Yeah. And yeah, like, okay. So someone just wrote me and they said they heard from someone. Heard, they, they talked to her at a bar and she's like, I'm going on the show to be to do, to do be a, a joke of it. Yeah. Make a joke of it. And and this executive is saying, oh, no, the queen is a real con contender. We're like, we know no. that Matt's just complying to keep R this girl on. And even what their conversation is like, so what I'm saying is, Matt, um, I think we're really could really be a good match. Yeah. And he's like, so do I. <laughs> so good, good to see you. Like he's just so like not into her at all. And uh, so there you go. Who's with he that. into? It's how many are left? Five or six or something? No. Now they brought five more. So there's like they're back to like 23 girls. Oh, really? Because yes. last night I happened to see like five of them sitting there. Oh, but, that must have been the group date. No, there's so many girls, and he makes out with like eight girls a date. Yeah, fully makes out, and um, I feel like he takes them out to like some bench that looks like it's very cold. They give a little blanket, yes. and a lap, and a fire, but the fire's too far away <laughs> for it to give them any heat. And I, the whole thing just seems like a nightmare just for some dick. It just me. well, it's dick, it's Instagram, it's you know. Sure, it's, I get it's, all, you, I get all the other and stuff, and it's also like you're 24. 
and you're on your first, doing your first job where you have to actually show up and like be in a cubicle and you're like, I think I'd just rather go on The Bachelor and and fight for one guy yeah. and maybe do something and then just do some flat fum, tummy tea after in a podcast. Like, why sure. am I sitting and doing marketing and yeah. data entry? And, that, and that's what they all do. Yeah, says, why yeah. Why not? I don't blame but, you. But, but do they make any money? Like, I know you've probably discussed this before, but I heard they pay them nothing. Oh, well, I just got some, oh my God, I just got some scoop. Um, the girls, the contestants make nothing. Yeah. Once you become The Bachelor, you, yeah, then, sure. you do make some money. And um, hold on. I'm going to go to this place. I have a source. Okay. Okay. And she said, so Claire, okay, who is right here. You know, they, she won last. Claire Crawley. Claire Crawley. She got the guy who was 10 years younger than her. He dumped her ass. And on Tuesday's episode, I went into a deep dive of how she's really fucked over. Right. And so here's even more about it. Claire is not allowed to keep any of the clothes from the season. Oh. And wow. normally they do. Okay. She was not compensated at all. This is from a source, allegedly. Taisha, who took over her place because she left early to be with him. I do remember that. Yeah. Taisha got a hundred thousand. And Emily Maynard was the highest paid at two fifty. However, since the cheating scandal and all the press, it looks like Claire, they're gonna throw her twenty five grand. Oh, to give twenty five grand more. Just feeling bad for her, I guess. I don't know. This is alleged from a source. Um, normally, the leads all get to keep the clothes, and let me tell you, the clothes on both her and Tasha were adorable. They have a great stylist. She didn't, because they were pissed right. that she like left with him and fucked up the whole thing at the La Quinta Resort and Spa. She's also the only one on the salon page not accepting clients. Well, too bad you couldn't go to her, but. I'm oh, going. Man, okay, so so anyway, we're gonna see if some. Okay, let me see. Um, also, a week before Dale dumped her, Claire announced um, on her social media. Of uh, oh, sorry. Also, a week before Dale dumped her, Claire announced on her social media about his new workout app. So right oh. before he dumped her, she was still promoting his stuff. He got like over seven hundred thousand Instagram followers from her. So um, you know, there you go. Her life is is really it's just he fucked her. And she was a little older, right? That was she, the th her she thing. She it was the oldest bachelorette in yeah. history. That's how they announce her every time. And she's not sixty. And we are no, she was yeah. thirty eight or nine, thirty nine, <laughs> yeah. I think. But you know, it, yeah. Okay, this is my tell story. me your I, story. I brought this story uh, because it's a little it's it's there's some juicy scoop here. Please tell. Okay, this is a song called Driver's License. Okay, I don't know if you've heard it, but it's well, the number I'm one play song it after in the country. The, we'll play it on the show. It's a TikTok sensation. It is like the fastest growing song on the charts in ten years. Okay, Big hit uh, by Olivia Rodrigo, who is some sort of uh, uh, Disney, Disney star, okay. as is this guy, uh, Josh Bassett. Okay. okay, now in the song Driver's License, it says, she says, Olivia Rodrigo says, I got my driver's license like you told me to this guy. Yeah. Uh, and I drove past your house after I got my driver's license and saw you with that blonde girl. Okay. That girl who makes me feel uh, like shit. Kind of what she, she oh, says. Oh, I did hear I, people talking yeah, about this. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So everyone's like, oh, that blonde girl is Sabrina Carpenter, who's also some sort of Disney star <sighs> and is now with this guy. Wow. Josh Bassett. This blonde girl, Sabrina Carpenter, writes a song, her own song, her clapback, I like to call it. Oh, my God. I love it. Called Skin. Yeah. And in Skin, she, now they're, they're both saying these songs are not about each other. Okay. But in the song Skin, Sabrina Carpenter says, I heard what you said about being the blonde girl or something. I mean, it's basically right. Right. Yeah. So that's why I brought it because it's, I mean, if actually I have the lyrics if you want me uh, to yes. read them. Hold on. It'll take me a second to get um, them up. Okay. Well, I, while you look for that, I yeah. want to just talk about it. I think it's great because yeah. in the rap world, rappers have been doing this forever. Right. right. Writing rap lyrics about each other, you know, talking shit and crap and everything. So I think it's great that the white Disney kids are finally getting in on this action. Yeah, I know. It's a good, right. Here, it's a great PR thing. It yeah. was Olivia's debut song, Driver's License, that really amped the drama up. Uh, where lyrics about an ex-boyfriend and an older blonde girl seemingly directed at Joshua and Sabrina. Okay. You wrote, 
Uh, but then Sabrina released her own song, which appeared to be a pretty direct response to Olivia and included some seemingly pointed lyrics about the situation. Seemingly? Seemingly. Oh, I thought... Se- I thought I was going to finally get good. No. So far, I'm like, this isn't that juicy. Well, I was, it's pretty juicy. Okay, get to it. Yeah. These, they, these people are bringing receipts. Is that what they say? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here's, now, here are the pointed lyrics. Maybe you didn't mean it. Maybe blonde was the only rhyme, which seemed to be a response to the reference in Blonde Girl Driver's mm. Don't drive yourself insane. It won't always be this way, which appeared to make direct reference to driver's license. And it said, we could have been friends, but you screwed it up. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so over the weekend, okay. I talked to Stephen Mango, who's a Juicy Scooper, who is an ex-Scientologist, but also very into the YouTube world. Right. And I was like, just explain to me a little bit about this YouTube world and these fights, because Trisha Paytas, who's this big YouTuber, her, yeah. was crying about how Jeffree Star, you know, Jeffree Star with the... Mm, and now, his Trish palettes. Paytas' big boobs. Uh, she's like sexy yeah. but around. She's kind of funny. Yeah. She's the one who I said. Dating Jason Nash for a yes. while, the comedian. Who I, she's the one who, when I met her about eight, seven, six, seven years ago, I was coaching Glozell to do stand up. It was this little show. It was on TV. I never saw it. Stand ups uh, coach YouTubers to do stand up. Got it. So I got Glozell, who's like, Wears you like know. green lipstick. Yes. And she's been around forever. And. She had actually done stand-up. So, like, she was great. Like, we hit it off. It was great. She asked for me. It was perfect. Trisha gets up there, and she's, I don't know who she is. You know, she's sexy, you know, like, but curvy. And she gets up there, and she just starts talking about sexual stuff. Right. Real nasty. And, um, but her, some of her fans are there, and I'm like, okay, it's fine. So, after we're in the green room, and she had all this candy in front of her, and I said, oh, where'd you get all that candy? And she goes, oh, my fans bring it to me. I go, why do they bring you candy? She goes, well, that's what I do on my YouTube channels. I just eat candy. <laughs> and then she goes on to say, but I think I should start doing stand-up. I'm like, are you no, kidding me? You You're rich candy. for just sitting at home and eating candy? Right. Why would you ever try to be a stand-up, which is the hardest, yeah. worst, most humiliating like, yeah. job? Want to go spend a weekend in Omaha at the Funny Bone? Just eat a Twix, bitch. <laughs> So anyway, I've kind of like followed her drama and like sometimes she releases songs and stuff and she's always dating people. So I'm like, what do they really date? And and basically what it, this world is of these really high YouTubers that have been around for a decade. Yeah. They used to they kind of like collaborate and like wink wink. Some of the relationships are real, some of them are fake. The they kind of fake the drama. It's like a fake reality show. But they all have their own channels. Yes. That's what I kind of gathered from this. I, this is like yes, this, That's what I'm saying. This feels sort of fake. Yeah. It, yeah. it feels kind of fake. And it's like, I don't know why we don't start causing more shit among each other. I know. Just like, it should just, like, you know, I don't know. I feel like sometimes the fans do. They try to poke oh, at it. Like, yeah. They come like, at me all the time. Or they'll say, you know, or they'll say to you, like, we like you better than Heather Fortune's or whatever. Better, or, yeah, yeah, you know, be- yeah. Yeah. Or you're better than Heather and I used to like Heather. But, and I'm like, God, can we just like be friends and work? like what? So, because they, I think they're used to this YouTube stuff. So Trisha Paytas was crying because that because Jeffrey Star's hairdresser, you know, his hairdresser is getting his hair braided and he does an Instagram live and he starts going off on Trisha Paytas being like, bitch, I can't believe you talked about Jeffrey Star. We took you to Britney Spears. We, he paid for you for everything. He was, you, you know, you were on his jet. And then she's crying because she's like, but you guys were so mean to me. You said I was fat. You knocked a chip out of my hand, and you made me really feel bad. And they're like, "Bitch, you, you were boring as shit." And she's like, "Well, maybe I just didn't want to. Maybe I was sad because you're calling me fat, you know." Yeah. And and he's like, so and he's like, "We did, we only talked about your bad skin once or something." <laughs> <laughs> it's so horrible. But I'm like, but then you know you do it, and you, she's got a, some song she's releasing. He has a palette coming out tomorrow. Which I'm like, what is with all these pallets? I go, do you think like this is gonna like be like Beanie Babies? Are these people that are collecting no, twenty-five pallets? Makeup, right? Pallets is just eyeshadow. Eyeshadow. And eyeshadow palette, an eyeshadow palette yeah. can last honestly like two years. Unless you drop it on the bathroom floor and shatters all over the place. Exactly. Yeah. So 
all these people collect all these pallets, which they probably aren't even expensive to make. All these pallets, you know, and then the Jeffree Star gives the YouTuber, so Trisha got a name in her palette. You know, it's like orgasm, cum buddies, you know, like all these just <laughs> disgusting names. And then like 12 year olds are like, I got the new Jeffree Star palette. My favorite colors is anal orgy, you know, like, right. yeah, and everyone's like, yay, that's all my daughter wants for Christmas. So I'm like, are they collecting it like just for Instagram? And then at a certain point, are you just going to chuck it? Like, like when you're like over it, like 18, when be the girl who's 12 who has all of them at 18 is going to be like, okay, that's crappy. Yeah. I don't know. But um, well, like you said, look they at the make so who, much who money. Beanie Babies were going to be like yeah. a retirement plan. But and... now it's all the new thing is all these people are now getting into skincare and kids that are like 12 are like using 12 serums on their face. I'm like, serums are for like yeah. people my age. You right. don't need a serum. When you need it. Yeah. Because like you watch these makeup things and it's like 13 billion steps. You know, it's like I do a full white face, then I tan it, then I, I mean, it's, and then I do serum and I don't know if they're buying it. But that's what the YouTube world is. So they is. create they these They create this drama. the fights, the love, the, yeah. And I've fallen, for, just, I've, fell, I've fallen for this one yeah. because I like this, both songs. I thought were pretty good. And well, good for I you. I tried to bring some juicy scoop. You did. You brought scoop. some juicy scoop. You reminded me of that YouTube drama, which I wanted to share. Okay, good. And then tr then he sent me the house Trisha bought. And um, it's very nice. She's got a, so she's making money. She has a big room for the candy. <laughs> so she's still eating candy? How did I like? Here I am busting my ass in this business. You and I both. We've been around a long time it's doing, genius. and we talked about it on this podcast. The things we've gone through, yes. the weird frog heads, and all those. Oh, things. let's we've, get into the weird thing. But that's no, coming we will. Up, yeah. that's, that'll bring us to the that's next coming thing. up. Yeah, and we uh, we didn't have an opportunity to just eat candy because oh. there was no youths. But if I knew we could just sit and eat candy, I would have. I mean, I wouldn't have had to do any of this shit. No. But it's a whole new world. Maybe if you eat candy with your white supremacist haircut. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat candy. And <laughs> oh boy, oh I don't know. Should it, only eat three musketeers. So go, okay, yeah. so go to what we, you want to talk about our thing. That Wait, we first let's okay. just talk about breakup. Another quarantine breakup, everybody. Elliot Page, formerly known as Ellen Page, star of Juno. As you know, she now identifies. She identifies as a man, but she goes by they, them, and their. Yes. The most confusing part of the transgender movement right. is the pronoun, which makes everything just confusing. Yeah. It really makes right. things confusing because you're like, well, oh, so there were two of you there? No, there was just one, but it's this person. So anyway... Honestly, I thought going from Ellen Al to Elliot was a little lazy. Like, if you're going to do it, you have some fun I actually, with the other name. See, I actually liked it. Because really? I thought it was old school because in the past, when people would transition like 20 years ago, it would go from Brandon to Brenda. Yeah. And then it started to become, no, totally. Bruce to Caitlin was totally a big jump. no alliteration, nothing. Yeah. And so I was like, oh. This kind of gives a little respect to maybe her parents because my friend whose daughter also transitioned to an, into a man, it was a totally different name. And it was like, do I keep the artwork around with the old name? And it was a oh, very, okay. it's a very sensitive thing for the yeah. parents. So, you know, it's fine. So, but anyway, they're getting divorced, but they're going to remain close friends. And, and, the, and her wife, Emma, had just like, I support him and everything, but you kind of wonder... Now that Ellen is Elliot, again, like anybody that whose partner transitions, even though they're gay, it still is a situation of, right. I'm a lesbian who was married to a woman. Yeah. Now you change the dynamic, and I don't oh, see myself point. as heterosexual. And I'm happy for your journey, Elliot. Yeah. But well, yeah, you can't expect the other person to, you know... Yeah, I never thought about that. Now, what is is Emma Porter, Porter an actress? I feel like I've seen her before. I don't know. She's very pretty. <coughs> yeah. uh, I, I think she's in the business somehow. Okay. But she's, you know, anyway, they're done. So that's a, yeah, well, three so years. So we are both watching Bling Emp Empire. I started watching it last week. You started watching it. And you, text, yeah, and I, you texted me. I, I know. I was fully convinced. No, just let's, we're going to say what you yeah. think. And then we're going to talk, we're going to take everybody through the steps of what happened. And you said, here's the cast of Bling Empire, which is the hit on Netflix. It's um, you crazy know, rich Asians, crazy rich Asians that are here in L.A. 
And what? And, and then they have this like older woman who's half Asian, half German, and she's sixty, and she has blonde hair and a lot of plastic surgery. And her name's Anna. And in one episode, she takes off her shirt, and you see her completely naked. Yeah. Yeah, which is, it didn't look too bad. No, actually. it looked yeah. pretty, yeah, yeah. good. I kind of liked it. Anyway, so, you know, she hears, there's no dick that's that good. Like, she has this accent because she's German and she's Japanese. Now, how something. do you, where, where do you stand on the entire series? I find it to be a little produced. Oh, it's definitely produced. Yeah. Like, they have the fight about a necklace, that the yeah. one girl wears the necklace that she also owns and she doesn't like it. But, um, you know, th there's there's juicier parts and then there's boringer parts. Right. But I, honestly, being in the lockdown of L.A., it makes me fall in love with L.A. again. And it makes me so excited to go out again. Because someone just said they were, like, sleuthing. And I think it was even shot in 2019. Like oh, because yeah, I noticed that, too. There's no mass, even in the no, background. No, definitely. But I don't even think it was 2020. Like, I, I think it was... You know, yeah. Uh, so yes, it wasn't 2020 at all. It was, I think, it was like summer of 2019. Right. And um, so it was just like it's just like fun to see people going out, and the, what makes LA beautiful, and the shots are beautiful of it. So it makes me like, okay, maybe everyone else has moved away, but maybe myself can be friends with the rich Asians. Yeah. And when this is over, we can have some fun. You can go to the bling, be a part of the bling empire. Yeah, I want yeah. to be part of the bling empire. Okay, I enjoy, I enjoy. I watched three episodes and I was kind of into it. So Chris texts me and he goes, "That older woman on Bling Empire is who we met with for this show to do the. We we're going to co-host. Yeah. The, Let's give the backstory. Okay. Let's give the backstory. Okay. Start. It started with you. Uh, yes. Okay. So just to give a little more backstory. Yes. Uh, back in the days we talk about the early days, there was a lot, there's a lot of like scammy different yes. people. You and we've talked about them on this podcast. You just meet with scam artists who are gonna and they're, you know they're doing this, they're doing yeah. that. They're, you know it's a scam, but you're so desperate to work, and you're so flattered that anybody's calling you, right? That you tell yourself. It could be true, but you know it's weird. Yes, of course. But you shove that thought deep down mm -hmm. in your soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just, <laughs> but it's only humiliating, and and yeah. it's it seemed to be a lot more prevalent uh, before you could easily Google right. somebody yeah. and and get to the bottom of it right away. It was much easier to scam and yes. stuff like that. So now, as as you know, as phones and easy Googles, it, yeah, it seems to kind of go away. And you and I got a little more of, of success, and we didn't necessarily need to go to meetings in weird buildings. Yes. Anyway, with all that said, I get a phone call from a girl I used to date a while ago, mm -hmm. and she says, "Would now I know they want you. Basically, she tells me that. Uh, we want Heather to host this award show of some sort. It's a... It's awards for cinema fashion. Right. So it's movies about fashion international that will be televised and filmed at a theater in Beverly Hills. Right, yes. Annual. Like, this has happened right. before. They did one other one, I guess, Okay. which uh, Natasha Leggero had hosted, and this is what they're telling me. Okay. Uh, and so I'm somehow just, to get you to go, yeah. they include me. Right. They're like, can you talk to Heather and get her to go to this? I say, sure. Now, it's a meeting down on Wilshire, which is, I know to get Either of us to go to Wilshire. Pain in the ass. In and the also of lots of traffic pre-pandemic. Yeah, pre pre-pandemic. Yeah. So this is actually the old E building, to, which ties oh, it into yeah. what we used to work at Chelsea lately. Uh, this is what E used to be on Wilshire. Anyway, um, so, I you we're supposed to go to the, you say, I'm not going to go. I said, good. No, I I'll, say, I, can we reschedule? And you're like, or something. And, I said, let and, me just go and, to this yeah. first meeting yes. and, I, and, and, and I'll see what it's all about. Right. It's going to be crazy. So, of course, I walk into this weird office that's gigantic but empty. I don't know yes. what these people do. I don't know if it's a magazine. I'm, it, it, like, it's a magazine. It's a, you know. It's, it's a, a lifestyle. It's a it's lifestyle. It's fashion. It's all, it's all yeah. bullshit, you know. Yeah. So the girl who I know, who I used to date, meets me and, like, tells me, like, a little, quickly a little bit about this woman I'm about to go meet. Yes. As I walk towards the corner office. She's a bit quirky. Just like, you know, she's quirky. She's quirky. Yeah. And it's like people sporadically sitting around a giant office. Enormous. Enormous. I don't know what anybody's doing. But anyway, I go into this corner office and here's this woman who looks a lot like this woman from yes. Empire. A lot. 
and so to give you what we're dealing with. Right. And she's sitting behind the desk, and I sit down, and I think I'm here to host <laughs> this show with you. Yes. So, and I think she's been briefed on why I'm here. Yes. And all that. So I sit down, and she seems to have no idea who I am or why I'm there. And she goes, Tommy Davidson's got the job. He's going to be hosting. I said, Oh, because Tommy Davidson is right. another comedian. Who is on and, In Living Color. And that's the first thing she says to me. Like, Tommy Davidson's going to host. And he's black. Yeah. And yeah. sure, probably a good guy. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know anything. Nobody told me anything about that. So yeah. I'm, why am I even here? Right. This goes on for, I meet, I'm in this office like two hours. This woman is gets soup delivered halfway through the meeting. <laughs> the soup delivery comes in. She's eating. She's sweating over hot soup. It's all just a night. She seems to not know anything. Certainly doesn't know who I am. Okay. Barely knows who you are. Uh, barely knows anything about like stand up comedy. Doesn't even know kind of what stand up comedy no, is. No, it was like this. this is like, okay, keep going. I'll yeah. tell you about anyway, my you know, yeah. You, you tell. yeah. And then like the the whole thing, I'm just like, this is so strange and bizarre. And I'm never, never again am I taking meetings or any. I'm done with all this bullshit. So I, I, the amount I'm, of times Chris has quit the business. Oh God! So I, I I call you like from the sidewalk after it's over, and I'm like, "Thank God you didn't come." Anyway, you go to meet her again. Okay, so then to, to tell you a story. so then the girl calls me and is like, "Look, um, they don't want Chris because they want diversity. Yeah. So she wants Tommy Davidson and you, but she's like, but I'm gonna get Chris to do something else that day. Like she be an said announcer. something like that to me. She's like, you could be in the audience." But the, and do uh, questions or announcing yeah. or whatever, and but the money is pretty good. Pretty pretty good. She you said know, she's gonna it, pay. Yeah. yeah, like she said, I'll say it. She said she's gonna do ten grand. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I knew it would be a lot of prep. I knew it would stress me out to do it, but I'm like, that's pretty great. So, and who knows? Like, it could. Who knows what it could lead to, or what? So I go to the meeting, and your friend, who's this cute girl, and she's like. Really, like, really setting me up. I'm like, what am I meaning? Like, job of the hut? Like, what is this? Like, she's just like, just, she's just, she's, you know, a little. I'm like, okay. So I sit down and she's like, so she makes me wait. And then I sit down and she comes looking very much like this woman. Yeah. And she's like, so, so you do the funnies. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, I'm a comedian. <laughs> And she has an accent. Yeah. And she's like, so this is the International Film Awards. We're going to be, um, we're going to be, you know, one of the people that already has accepted to come there is Pepe Plupto. You know Pepe Plupto? <laughs> she told me she, she was going to, I said, she goes, I'm, like, she goes uh, I'm talking to Robert Plant. Led Zeppelin is going to get back together to perform. I'm like, I think that really? Because a lot of people have been trying to get Led Zeppelin back together. You, you, this is what you told me. Led Zeppelin's performing. You're going to get them back together. Okay. And then she'd be like, hold on. And she'd just like pick up the phone and no one's calling. And she's like, yes. You know, like to make herself like look busy or something. But I was just like, and so I want maybe you and Tommy. Tommy's my good friend. Let me get him on the phone. It rings. He does not answer. Okay. Tommy, you know. <laughs> I go, oh, I've met But Tom. she's talking about Tommy Davidson like it's Jamie Foxx. Yes, like, and she's like, Tommy and I are friends. And I go, yeah, I've met Tommy once. I mean, we, you know, sure, if we get together, you know, we can work something out uh, and practice and all that. And um, she's like, so you'll be doing the awards. You do like a funny skit before. And what do you, like, how do you, what do you say? You like... What the kind of stuff do you say when you're there? And I'm like, Ugh. so I go, yeah, you know, get back to me. We'll do a dinner with Tommy and we'll see like what yeah. we can really do. So I get in the car and the friend calls me and she's like, she goes, okay, I, I know you've got the job. I know you have the job. I just like have to like, I just have to like send her like some credits of yours or something. And I, and she goes, and I hope you won't hate me after. And I go, you know what, actually? And this is where I'm like, Heather, like, it's time. It's time to speak up. It's right. time to turn down shit. Like, it's time. This you know? is, yeah. And I'm talking to myself, and I'm like, 
I go, you know, I just, I don't know about, this is, this is even a fashion. It's not like I'm talking about like, you know, Calvin Klein. I'm like, this is like weird European movies that just are fashion movies. Who's ever heard of a fashion movie? And I'm like, I just don't think I know enough about it. And the woman kind of makes me nervous. She goes, oh, she's just trying to flex her money. She has so much money. I go, from what? I don't know. She just inherited. She has like five houses in Beverly Hills. She has so much money. So when you tell me, I think it's the same woman, I'm like, God, that woman seemed an actor. So familiar. that's what happened. So anyway. So I think that's right. But so anyway, so so Chris tells me that I cannot sleep all night. I'm trying to text the girl. I, I, well, let me just clear. Yes. This. I'm watching Bling Empire. Yes. I think I see this woman from Bling Empire and I, and I immediately text you and go, that's the woman we met for that weird thing. I'm 100% convinced. It convinced. Looks so, somehow she just, she, yes. I, I feel like I know this he, woman. Chris would go on a stand, hand on a Bible. Oh, it, easily. Yes. And I go, I just, I'm like disappointed in myself because you don't have like that weird memory for yeah. things. And I go, she seemed familiar. I go, but, oh my God, I guess you're right. So now in my head, I'm seeing now this person be like, tell me about how you decide to be funny, girl. You know, like, I was like, oh, go try. To. So then I, I try to text the girl, the girl that was your yeah. friend. I It's not going through. The phone is dead, whatever. And... I start looking up stuff. I can't. I'm putting her name, Anna Shea, in fashion awards. I'm doing the same thing. Nothing's connecting. Yeah. I finally put up fashion awards, find YouTube, and I see Kelly Osbourne's going to host. And I remember, so what happened with your friend is I said, I I actually like doubled the price. Yeah. And I said, and I need a deposit now. And then she's like, okay, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And- then I said, you know what? We were going somewhere, and I'm like, the whole week, and it was going to be on a Sunday night. I go, the whole weekend that I'm away having fun, I'm going to be fucking stressed yeah. about how to pronounce Le Plet Le Plou. I mean, like the whole world. Ladies hor- and gentlemen, Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> but I'm like horrible with like pronouncing names. Everything's going to have to be like phonetically written out. Like I'm just like, I'm not, no, this is just something I don't. Anyway, before I can turn it down, because God forbid I turn down anything, they go, no, we're going with Kelly Osbourne or whatever. Great. Great choice. Who cares? So I look it up, and they did have the awards ceremony via Zoom, the Cinema Film Awards. At some theater. It's a full international network. I don't know who watches it. She must pay for the whole thing. Like, she owns it. Anyway, but not but it, it so I look up the video of the awards ceremony that's been up for like months. Yeah, has 152 YouTube views. 152. 152 like total, like not 200, 152. Right. Yeah. And as I'm watching it, as I'm like skimming through, skimming through, just kind of seeing like what is this, and then Kelly is like, and and all of a sudden I'm like stop, and she goes. And the the CEO of the cinema, and I go, oh, this is, we're going to see Anna Shea here. And we see. Uh, this other woman. Yes. This is the woman we met. Right. This is Anna Shea from Bling. Right. I mean, very easy And the mistake. same type of act. Accent, they act the same way. Same age. Same, like, I go to Paris all the time. She kept telling yeah. me. There's like, and she goes, and at one point we're in our meeting, she goes, oh, remind me to call Johnny Depp. That's just out of nowhere. And then she was like writing buzzwords down on like an envelope on her thing. I said something like, I have an Instagram following. She's like, Instagram. Yeah, like, Instagram. Yeah. Like, so you have the social media. And then, <laughs> so the whole thing comes down to, I remember they called me, yeah. the girl who, who hooked us all up. And she's like, can you p- promote her business on Juicy Scoop? Like, that's what I... <gasps> Oh yes, uh, she's that like, was the uh, that was the... doing promotions on my podcast, on cover to cover, yes. and Juice Scoop. And I was like, I don't even know what it is. Like, I know. what it is? She goes, it's a film company, a magazine. Oh yes. So or... part of the thing that she wanted to know is all the brands that are on Juicy Scoop, and and then it was like, and you'll mention it six times on that, Juicy Scoop. Yeah. I'm like six times. I know. I'm like, I, that's what I was like. I'm just out. I'm, I just go, you know, it's just stressing me out. It's stress. It's just stressing me out. They're gonna be disappointed in me. I guarantee it. Yeah. And that is too much I can take. But the the filler face of what happens when someone is like over fifty five and they don't want to just go with an old fashioned facelift. This woman, I looked her up from like two thousand fifteen. She was in a magazine. She had dark hair. She looked so much better. Yeah. So she filled her face and she filled her face. And I hope they know each other because I think they'd hit it off. Oh my God! They <laughs> they need their own reality show. Uh, I'd watch the two of them eat soup for an hour. <laughs> well, on the Bleak Empire, they find a penis pump 
in the shower. They go, she's having a party on like yeah. episode four and a penis pump is just sitting in the shower. Clearly the producers like either saw it there, put it there, planted it right. there. But Anna gets very upset. And I don't really understand what a penis pump is. So she had a partner that couldn't get hard. So then they yeah. put a, a they, and you pump it like a like a heart, like a like so. like you're taking yeah, your like blood um, pressure. So you just pump it like that. That's what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. It was very weird and big. It looked like a big water canister. <laughs> yeah, it's like I I don't know. I need to find out more about that. Yeah. Courtney, everybody is date. Courtney Kardashian is dating Travis Barker. They have been friends for a while. Their kids are friends. And they, there were rumors about it, and then there was the Instagram thing where he would com constantly comment on her, you know, photos, and then he took a photo of a pool in Palm Desert, and then she took one, but like a little further over, and the sluice put it together, and they're like, that's the same tree, and that's Kris Jenner's Palm Desert house. Whoa. So then, finally, it was confirmed, they're boning. Okay. I think that's a good, I like that. But on his book. neck, I think is his first wife, Shanna Mochler. Oh, is that who that is? Yes. Yeah, that could be because, Mel Monroe. No, or, because look, yeah. that, look. Oh, yeah. That's his first wife. So they had a they had a show called Meet the Barkers, a right. lot, like in 2000 and I don't know, five. Because what band is he in? Blink-182, uh, Blink yeah. And she had, she was like a Miss USA or something, but then she got kind of cheesy looking, but she was like, anyway. And then she had a daughter with Oscar De La Hoya. That's right, yes. And then, um, yeah, and then this is their daughter now, and she's doing TikToks about how hot her parents are. Yeah, she's a singer or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the Oscar De La Hoya girl. Yeah, she's cute. But, but Travis, I went a deep dive on Travis. Travis, after he cheated on Shanna all the time, then they broke up finally. Right after they broke up, he was boning Paris Hilton. Going around the country, having the world, having a great time with Paris. Right. Then he met Kim when Kim was just Paris's assistant, and they were just friendly. But then Shanna threw a drink on Kim at a nightclub. Oh, okay. So this, they all, all go way. They all go way back. <laughs> yeah. But this is definitely a different specimen to enter their home. Yeah. A white guy with a ton of tats. They have. Black guys with tats. But Courtney's never gone the black guy route, has she? She has never. Yeah. She's the only one. No. All the others have gone uh, into, you know, the NBA or whatever, football. Right. NFL. Like, between Scott and this guy was just, like, a 25-year-old hot model. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm all, I'm okay with this Travis Barker one. I mean, he's didn't he survive a plane crash? I remember he was on a yeah. plane that crashed with the DJ who wound well, up surviving the plane crash. Then he wound up committing suicide later DJ on. DJ AM. Yeah, DJ AM. He was on that plane, too. As was Travis Barker. Uh, I think that fucked him up a lot. And then who knows? I think he's sober now. And I don't, Blink 182 is still out and about, but I think he yeah. just plays drums with like Soldier Boy or he plays drums on all, a lot of right. He's other a drummer. Tracks. Anyway, it's confirmed. Okay, they're hot and heavy. I'm gonna say this about him: he seems like one of the skinny guy, big penis. I feel like he's that guy. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Tommy Lee. There's a lot of the him. Like, do the they one just who's not dating, eat? Um, How do they keep their abs? And they're like 55 or yeah. whatever and still have great skinny abs and a, a big yeah, what They dick. just don't eat, I guess. I don't think they eat that much. And I also think the dick always looks bigger because if the thighs are long and skinny. Right. You know, yeah. then that visually. <laughs> That's a good point. It's like, you know. I feel like the other guy who's dating um, Megan uh, uh, Fox. Oh, he's another one. Same machine type. Gun, machine big gun, big dick Kelly. Yeah, I feel like he's another one. Skinny, oh, you know dick. he has a big yeah. dick. Uh huh. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Well, I don't know the dick size of Austin from Southern Charm, but Southern Charm is a reality show on Bravo, and there's some fun crossover messiness that happened over the weekend. Oh, exciting. So this girl, Madison, is a single mother with a six-year-old and has one of the best bodies I've ever seen. Okay. She's a hairdresser. She got on the show because she started dating a regular a couple years ago named Austin. And this show is just like a bunch of frat guys with a couple cute girls. It's not your typical Bravo show. They had him always fighting, and she's awful to him. Like right. on the show, she'll be like, you're a pussy! You're a beta male! And he's just like, then leave. Like, you're awful. And she just screamed. She's really awful and mean. And... um, 
you know, and then he, but early in the relationship, she caught him having a threesome with two other girls. And when she caught him and the two girls were there, he was like, Madison, you're a crazy person. And she's like, there's literally two girls in the bed. Like, yeah. I don't think I'm a crazy person. So they're both just awful to each other. Meanwhile, Kristen Cavallari from the Hills fame and from certainly Cavallari or whatever, yeah, very cook, Cavallari. Cook and, yeah. She... Is got three kids with Jay Cutler, who's a football player. Quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Yeah. Stopped being a football player, Retired. started wearing turtlenecks, started yeah. hanging out and helping her hang up clothes at the store. Okay? Right. <laughs> they have three kids. They break up yeah. during pandemic summer. Sure. And then all of a sudden, she's on her Instagram, Kristen Cavallari, with Austin and another character named Craig, singing around to your favorite Taylor Swift's we're never getting back together. Okay. okay? Yeah. We're never, never getting back never, together. Never. So that was kind of like a fe- fuck you to Madison. Like that oh, she's okay. cheering him on. We're never getting back together. Now, well, how, do, how do those worlds collide? Are they... they just met each other in Nashville somewhere. I don't oh, know. Okay. I don't know how they met. Or sometimes stars, they DM each other yeah. and they're like, ooh, this is exciting. Why don't we be friends? Right. Which, by the way, I just was talking to a reality star. Um I won't say him, but he's a real estate reality star. And I said, oh, are you friends with this other guy that does, like, the flipping of the houses? And he goes, no, that guy's reached out to me a bunch of times, but I have enough reality star friends. I'm tapped out. <laughs> and I was like, that is so fucking funny. Like, you'd say, oh, I would think you'd be friends, you'd think, but, like, yeah. I don't really have time for any new reality friends. So, anyway, they say, well, you know, but there's something going on. Meanwhile, she starts hinting. Um, yeah, you know, well, maybe I know more about that than other people. Why are you dating Jay? Is Madison dating Jay, Kristen's ex? And she's like, well, maybe, you know. Then she goes on Instagram Live and does a, we're never, ever getting back together. And then says something kind of snarky about, I doubt something like uh, someone on Instagram Live is like, oh, Jay's home with his kids. And she's like, I doubt those kids are with him or something. So... Everyone's like, what is going on? Then Jay and Kristen do a photo together like this saying 10 years of users, but we're here. And everyone's like, wait, are they back together? The parents of three, are they back together? Jay Cutler and Kristen Cutler. Is that what that Instagram means? Because they get means? together for like Halloween and stuff. I saw those. Yeah, but are they back together? No, they're bonding over the messiness of Madison. And then Madison goes, I guess I need to show me some receipts. So the Bring receipts, the receipts. are the like. screen grabs from the Texas cha- text exchange where Jay is like, am I going to, I'm, are we still seeing each other this weekend? And she's like, you got to ask first. And he's like, oh, I already bought a direct ticket. It was the last direct flight. If, if it doesn't work Whoa. out fine. And she's like, no, we can see each other. And then he writes her like, I don't appreciate you talking about me and especially my kids or something and then she's like this whole thing is disgusting and then then she and then you can see that she says you shouldn't have slept with me if you know if that's the way you felt but then she slightly covers it but uses the sl keeps the sl and then covers it with something like receipts so like anybody is like okay clearly they fucked clearly he pursued her but then but then Kristen's gay best friend, who's a hairdresser, he goes on Instagram and is like, always, any adult, the hairdresser. any adult that shares private text between two people is is low is low on my list. You yeah. know, and then other people are like, well, you guys were coming after her anyway. Hope no one had an STD. God forbid anyone had COVID spreading around. Let's just now hope what, they didn't get Where's Austin Kroll in all this? Is he out? This is Austin, and he's just like, glad I'm not with her. Oh, okay. She's after anybody with the largest blue check mark, meaning okay. like she's out to like, she would like more reality star friends. Yeah. My friend should give that other person, like she can make more right. reality friends. Some people are tapped out. She's fresh to it. She's only been on the show for a couple years. Uh-huh. Prior to that, she was a single mom cutting hair. So her life significantly has improved. I feel like uh, Kristen Cavallari and and Jay Cutler, this is below them. I feel like they're bigger stars than dealing with some some people from some third leads on Southern Charm. I feel like, yeah, why are they doing that? 
I, I don't think they want that. I think that's why they're pissed because oh, really? they're like, we yeah. didn't, I didn't ask for this. Yeah. So there you go with that drama. And okay? she's, wasn't she dating like a comedian or Jeff Dye? Wasn't Jeff, there's no mention of Jeff Dye Jeff in this Dye's at all. Jeff Dye's not mentioned, but guy, that's what he's living for is to get mentioned yes. in these type of situations. Yeah. So I, this, um, a juicy scooper, shout out to Brittany, wrote this out to really make it clear that um, Kristen got word that Jay and Madison hooked up. Kristen, Austin, Craig, and Justin make plans to meet up and record an IG of them hanging out with Kristen standing on Austin's shoulder. Madison does an IG live mocking Kristen's IG live with Austin and then makes comments that she doubts Kristen's kids were with their dad the night that she taped the IG live. Meaning the night that Chris, that Kristen and Austin were doing the IG live, she hints, I was actually fucking your ex. Oh. Okay. Wow. Jay and Kristen then post a pic talking about users, and then Madison post text receipts showing Jay as a pursuer. So it was a lot. Now, I, I just to add what I've heard, yes. I'm hearing rumors, there's rumors uh, online that Jay Cutler has been dating Tommy Lauren. You know that girl? She's no. like a um, Fox News kind of oh yes uh, that yeah, girl the blonde the blonde, yes, the blonde yes, yes. Uh, been, conservative there's girl there's been a lot of chat about that that they're well, the, the, thank you up. for bringing that juicy also scoop Nashville, to the table like a Nashville yes. connection wow uh, apparently they've gone on some dates what well, I heard gone on some dates and a lot of people I f- sometimes pop on her Instagram lives wow and uh, I'll see people write like uh, where's Jay are you with J- is Jay there and she'll pretend like she doesn't see them but you know Anyway, I've heard that one, a hot one as well. Now, let's talk about the latest on Army Hammer, okay? Sure. The, our favorite Hollywood cannibalist. It's, yeah. Now, you said you know one of the girls. I know Courtney Vukovic, yes. The now, one who, which the one, one is Courtney? Because the uh, one I have a photo of here is the 22-year-old whose rib he wanted to um, smoke yeah. and find a doctor that would do this. And here's the A ta- that he etched in her scarred in her body hit oh. for army oh, he actually was, yeah and it was very 50 shades of gray and then he would bruise her and she's like i'm so bruised he goes she goes i, I won't be able to see anybody looking like this and he's like that's what i like oh. and they have to say do sir and daddy and i think because she liked 50 shades of gray she kind of went along with it and now yeah. she realizes how fucking weird it was she said i thought i was in a traditional bdsm relationship just i go f- cute what one. is traditional yeah, just a cute fun one come on everybody <laughs> where i beat the shit out of you <laughs> yeah well, um that... oh anyway and... this other girl courtney Vukovic, is uh she came out right after the first uh couple of texts had, yeah. had, had come out oh there she's, it is uh she's she was a big chelsea lately fan dallas burned out very pretty girl um and she used to come to anytime she'd probably come to see Wait, you she in might Dallas. have been the rib girl i'm getting everyone confused yeah. but no, anyway they she, both she, have spoken up so she yeah. came out and said i've dated army hammer and uh it was crazy like she said i went into therapy for oh. uh she felt post-traumatic did she, stress did she date him like just recently since his breakup with the wife uh, or yes. okay so yes. all these people are just recent there isn't yes. someone coming from like when you were 22 no, no, and this want... is recent from what okay. i got but then she said, you know, I had to go to therapy and I had to because of post-traumatic stress, what I went through. I don't know what she went. But then she goes, how long? She, I dated him from May to June or something. I'm like, wow, three yeah. weeks of dating and, you know, you can have to. But anyway, well, so, God, I think so. Someone's beating the shit out I of me. I don't know. I, yeah, my yeah. ribs to cook. What she, but it's, it's all just. Uh, so what happens? So give me that baby back, baby back. <laughs> So, but he's not going to be in this J-Lo movie now, right? No, he Who's said, be? he said, all these are such lies and they're so disturbing that I'm going to have to stay with my children because the, they're so traumatized my, about and, the and Cayman ma- Islands. Yeah. And make them some barbecue. I don't yeah. know. I know. Um, but obviously, you know, the, his agents are just like, just stay low. We don't know what we're going to do with you, but go right. away. You don't want to be in shotgun But people, are free to, people brought up a video of him on some talk show and he's like, I can do ropes really quick. I can tie ropes. And and him and the the host did it. He does it in one second because he's all into bondage. Yeah. So then, along with all this stuff, are text messages that he had sent to the 22 year old model of like, um, I want you to wear these bondage things, and it's a ma- on a mannequin, and it's this red thing that's like ties around your boobs, yeah. and then there's a leash on it, and she's like, okay, sir. You know, and then he also sent photos she found out to other people of her naked body, of her bounded up together. I don't know if she's going to sue or what, what the See, plan this is. This is what I try to tell every. If you want to date famous people, 
And I'm not saying what he did, what he did is right or wrong. But yeah. if you're going to be one of those people who wants to goes out there and you know gets in the relationship with, this they're fucking weirdos, you know. Yeah. And and you know a lot of times, like this guy, you know Johnny Depp gets in these situations. If you're a 52 year old guy who wants to date a 24 year old, yeah. you're gonna have to deal with some. Some interesting. I always situation. thought the weirdest thing was to get under a glass coffee table. And the shit. guy gets under the co- glass coffee table and you shit on yeah. the table. I know. That was what like Heidi Fleiss's like girls would do for like ten grand. Yeah. For I ten grand, I was about to host a fashion show. No one's gonna watch. <laughs> talk about Maybe taking. Talk about taking a shit. That thing's got 124 views. I'd rather watch someone shit on a table. <laughs> Now, forget about shitting. It's about eating wow. the live bodies. I know. You know, and it's funny because he was such a, uh, you know, you didn't know anything about him. He seemed like an attractive guy. Oh, I, I told you, you reminded yeah. me of my 19-year-old boyfriend. Yeah. I, I loved the movie where he was seducing the four, the, the, the guy. The little, yeah. I uh, loved, by yeah. Name. But now you can't. You just can't look at him in that way anymore. No, and then, um, yeah, they're finding stuff where it just seems really... <clears throat> creepy now like i said like the rope thing and all yeah, this he took stuff. a picture of a license plate and right in a home depot parking lot said i eat people or something it, it and was, i was... i got some scoop about he has an aunt that was disowned that i'm in contact with i'm trying to get on the show because he's from armand hammer yes Fortune. big big money right. and there's a lot of weirdness in the history from the great grandfather to the grandfather to his father to the family doing really weird you know, dysfunctional, gross, abusive shit. Right. So we're going to uncover that next. Okay. Um, I'm obsessed with backcracking videos. And Ooh. and I okay. think this is what's working. This Like, it's all hot girls and hot guy chiropractors that then crack their body. Really? Yes. And this is a thing on, on Instagram or something? Well, I noticed the ones that have, like, this girl has, like, a, you know, a tank on and one rogue nipple seems to be up there. But... Yeah, I love... She's got some eyelashes on her, too. Oh, I wow. love backcracking videos, but I think people are getting off on the fact that it's kind of statistic a little bit that you see, like, these hot girls, and then the sky's like... Yeah. And you hear it, and and I was like, am I? Is that going to be the next thing that people are like, Heather fucking <laughs> is weird you're, you're about the crack cracking? Like, even with the boys, like, they can, like, self-crack now a little bit, but I still want to crack their backs. And so they'll go... And I'll be like... Why wouldn't you let me do that? Like, yeah, it's weird. It's been a long pandemic. Okay, <laughs> Erica Jane. We'll follow okay. up on Erica Jane. She went to KFC, <laughs> and what I love is that she's at KFC, meeting Mickey, who is her choreographer that that taught her to the famous move of pat the puss, pat the puss, pat the puss. <laughs> anyway, they're met at KFC because there's no other place to eat, so they had to get the KFC and eat in their car. And then the Daily Mail guy said, and as they got their KFC. They were maskless. I'm like, they got in the car and ate the chicken. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. are you the, the same writer? Are you the one that caught me at the fucking village? How am I supposed to eat? <laughs> you gotta eat. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah. so she has been tied to Army Hammer in a very weird way. Uh, I Someone sent okay. me this blurb. So, basically, have you heard of Finstas? It's fake Instagram accounts for celebrities. Yes. And supposedly... Army's fake Insta, which again, none of this is provable. It's alleged. He posted a photo of her and said, um, my neighbor, my new neighbor slipped into my DMs. Apparently she can hear me having sex outside and wants in. She's done all these weird, very sexual posts while her ex-husband is been caught for, you know, stealing money from Indonesian orphans and burn victims and amputees so that she could have her glam squad and wear, wear her nips out. She, and she's like, I don't give a fuck. These baffoons want to eat my pussy, you gullible shit. Like, I'm like, God, is this the... <laughs> so anyway, she was doing some dom, dom, dom. Like when this rumor came out, she was like putting on Instagram like, I'm the dom, you're the matrix, put it together and let's have some... You know, like what? So everyone's like, what is she saying? So people went and said the backyard photos of Erica's new rental match okay. the backyard photos of a house that someone's friend used to rent before her, which was right next door to Army Hammers. And that woman and her kids used to have arm here Army Hamming, Hammer having sex outside as well. Okay. So it all matches up that they're neighbors. 
Wow. And so she was in on a threesome or something? Yes. So I don't know if they're fucking or that she just DM'd once and said something funny and it got out. They may have never met or screwed. But she supposedly has commented before this, not during the, the cannibal stuff, but during like thinking that he was just like into hot outdoor sex. Remember yeah. that scene in Sex and the City when Samantha was in Malibu and she kept seeing the guy having sex showering. outside and she couldn't take it? Yeah. And she's like, mm, right. eating her guacamole. And she's like, oh, I'm so horny. Yeah. I'm about to slide off my seat. Didn't it's a dry his... day in Malibu. <laughs> Did you see that guy's penis? Like they showed his dick yes. in the movie. I love when they show dicks in movies. It was it very always... rare years ago. That was some, there, was a, some, there was a lot of dicks the last couple I of years I just saw Shia LaBeouf's dick in a movie on Netflix. On what what movie? Um, What's his? The remains like? of a woman or something. It's kind of a weird movie. Yeah. Um, it's just it's a movie on Netflix and we watched it you know recently and I the, saw him get kicked out of a restaurant on Ventura Boulevard pissing on the floor. So so we both I see this dick. I think his dick comes out a lot. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah. I mean, it was like it, you know what he, the dick was showing in one of those moments that you hate where it's just a shirt, no pants, just dick. <laughs> I don't like that. And it's That's just a, a shirt look. right at the top of the dick. Yeah. So you just see a little bit of hair, then the dick's flaccid. Yeah. And like possibly a pair of socks. Like nothing, the worst. <laughs> nothing more emasculating than standing there with your little dick out and just a shirt on, no pants. The only thing more emasculating is having to get rescued from like hiking like a man like yes. you go and the helicopter like on the news is carrying your limp body <laughs> like, I, Jesus I just went to go hiking now I'm being dragged by a helicopter through the woods and I always hate it when, like you know when they get the helicopter right and they, get, and they attach it to the bed yeah. you know but then it's like and you're like fuck he's gonna fall out even it out even it out even you just pick me up in a car or something why the helicopter I feel like just an easier way to do this <laughs> Oh, my God. So I don't know what's going to happen with him. This is kind of really juicy. Jack's, Jacqueline Bissett. Yes. Not Jacqueline Bissett. What am I saying? Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy Onassis, JFK's wife. Don't you remember she was always saying she was French? Ooh. My mom was obsessed with that because my mom would. My mom told me she was half French, yeah. half French. Um, Irish. So I went and told everyone I'm three quarters Irish because my dad's 100% and I'm mm -hmm. one quarter French. Right. I went around my whole life saying that. People go, oh, you look kind of exotic. Oh, well, I'm one quarter French. It has now been exposed that Jacqueline was not from French noble royalty. Her dad started that thing. She was pulling a Hilaria Baldwin. Uh, yeah, before. She kept, and then, remember there was a scene where they go to France. It's like in every movie about the Kennedy. They go to France, him and, and yeah. Je when he's the president, and France goes crazy because they think she's French. Yeah. And he's like, well, I know who you really came here to see, and he looks and she's, you know... And everyone's like, oh, Jacqueline, Jacqueline, Jacqueline. <laughs> and she's like, oh, blah, blah. she could speak French, you know, and she has that voice. And she, blah, blah. and she acted like she was French, and he loved that she was French. This book that came out in 2017 that Daily Mail talked about, she wasn't French. She was one-eighth French. That's it. And But they weren't French aristocrats like the grandfather had told her or the yeah. dad had told her. She just went along with this lie. Guess what I found out when I did my 23 and Me? You're not French either. No. <laughs> wow. Thank God my mom is See? dead to not yeah. find out the truth. Um, they just said I was like 98% Irish and like 2% European white English. Right. And I'm like, where is the French in me? And I said, I'm French Canadian. I'm a French Canadian. Somebody wrote and they said, French Canadian is not even like a real thing. Canada, just like America, had Indians, and people just came yeah, there from French, other countries. Yeah. So, like, Irish people came there, French people came there. But I think my mom's mom, but I don't know. They just started to say they were French, but they're not. They're Irish. Yeah. I guess it's just more exotic than... But my mom was like, I so identify with Jacqueline. We're both French. And so now I feel bad ripping on Hilaria so much because yeah. I was walking around. I took French in high school. Oh, I've got to be part of my heritage. Yeah. So you are. You are very similar to Hilaria Baldwin. Wow. <laughs> now, what if it comes out Hilaria Baldwin? Where do, you, do these people go? Oh, like, my God. When well, you're that out I found out that Alec Baldwin is doing a hit, a new sitcom coming. 
Oh, I saw something about with it. With him and Kelsey Grammer. Yeah. And they're going to be, you know, so I don't know, you know, if it's funny. I don't know that this, you know, the 60-year-old people at home will care. Right. You know. Um, just two old men. Yeah, neither. Roommates yeah. or something. Or? Um, yes. And then, uh, so I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. But there was another story that they were really mean to this lady that used to run the horses. The at, ho- I read that at story. The, at, what is that? the Hamptons. What's the Amistan? Bridge Hampton. Amagansett. Yes. So she had a horse place. Yeah. And she, she kept very dirty, according to what I read. She kept it dirty, but boy, could she talk to the horses. <laughs> And, but she rented it. If you it. wanted to keep your horse there, it was cheaper than it's some cheaper. of the other Amagansett. But she was renting it, and it was right in the backyard of of Alex's place. Yeah. And sure enough, one day after she'd been renting it for a certain amount for years, the owner said, I'm going to raise the rent, and I need all the money up front. Yeah. And she's like, well, I don't have that money. He's like, okay, well, sorry, bye. So then Alec bought it, and he called it a horse rescue. However, no, there maybe five of the horses are rescued and the rest of the people are renting it. Yeah. But they got a cute girl that was her yoga friend that oh, looked much better in the, the riding other... pants. Yeah. yeah. She was they put together. She had a kicked out the co- other old yeah. <laughs> And then Hilaria's friend ran it. Now the other woman's talking to some broken down horse. <laughs> Homeless. So there you go. Chris. Wow. I'm so happy to have you back. Thank you very much. What do you want? I know you guys, I know many people know about your podcast. Cover to Cover, cover is which podcast? is a big hit. Yeah, check it out. Cover to Cover. It's fun. You'll like it. Can I promote a date that I have coming up? Um, Actually, no. Appleton, yes. Wisconsin. Appleton, Wisconsin. Oh. Skyline Comedy Club. That my mom's from Wisconsin. February 5th and 6th. See if there's any French yeah, well, people there. Will, if you are French, come and you get a free French fries. <laughs> Appleton, Wisconsin. Skyline What's the Comedy date Club. again? February 5th and 6th. Nice. Yeah. Um, and I'm down. going to be at the Houston Improv. Oh, you February are? February 12th and 13th. Oh, you're back at Yes. It. That'll be my first show in a real long time. I did That's one like show in Tempe. Weekend. But I will bring it. It'll be fun. Definitely come. And it's they're really being careful. You know, uh, half capacity and the private tables and all that stuff. So um, I just did some shows in Utah and it felt real good. It felt like very safe and people yeah. were all separated. And yeah, they kind of really. I mean, I had no when I did Tempe, it was perfect. Nobody got sick. It was great. So, you know, the precautions. And then I have more dates at HeatherMcDonald.net. And Chris, your website is what? Uh, Frangiola.com. Awesome. Thank you.